Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable, relatable to our everyday lives. So come on in, y'all. Let's get started. Come on. Ear, do you provide an ear to listen to when um, things go rough for her on the show? We talk a lot. You do. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a conservative voice that's going to be missing from the show. Would you ever consider joining The View? You know, I've done The View a lot. Um, It's a really iconic, dynamic group of women. And as as they like to say, and I actually think they're right, one of the most important political shows in the country today. Would you ever join the show? I understand your question, Andy. You're not answering it. Okay. So I wanted us to listen to that clip because I know a lot of you... Uh, work and you've got children, you've got spouses. And so you're not always uh, watching a lot of television. And that was SC Cup talking to Andy Cohen last year, January 14, 2020. And you heard what he asked her. And of course, you heard her keeping the door open there. Because listen, she is not going to ruin the opportunity for a potential check. And I don't blame her. If I were in her position, I wouldn't either. So I want to talk to you guys about something because, you know, every time we come together and we talk about what changes does The View need to make to get the show back to some resemblance of class, of professionalism. One of the things we all, most of us agree on is that Megan needs to go. And then some people say, okay, well, but what about this person? What about that person? I think one of the things that, you know, is, you know, comes up all the time is who would we want if they were to let her go, if she were to quit and move on to greener pastures? Who would we as the audience, as the viewership want? There are always two names that I've seen over and over these last many years that we've been together. Tara Setmayer and Essie Cup. So we're going to talk about Tara uh, next week. But today I want to tell you why, in my view on The View, uh, Essie Cup would never and will never be offered a permanent co-hosting gig on this show. Okay. And I'm also going to share some information with those of you who are new to The View and maybe you haven't been rocking with this show for so many years, like most of us who consider ourselves original viewers, OG viewers. And so I want to talk to you about something. Okay. So first, let me share with you why I say in my view on The View, she'll never be offered a permanent co-host. First of all, she's tried out before and she failed. Okay. And secondly, ABC learned from their mistake the first time, the first time being when they were looking for someone to replace Sarah, when Sarah left to go to that third hour of GMA, Megan suggested they bring on her sister, her best friend, Abby Huntsman, who was the daughter of John Huntsman, who was currently at that time an ambassador in the Trump administration. And because The View listened to Megan, because she was running the show, James Goldston, we've talked about James Goldston before. He's retired now or he quit or he went to greener pastures. Let's just say it that way. You know, he was uh, the president of ABC News at that time. And according to the reports, he always catered to whatever Megan wanted because he was very close friends with her family, allegedly. Okay, so they listened to her and they brought on Abby without even making Abby chemistry test. Uh, Before Megan, every woman always chemistry tested, okay? But they stopped it with Megan, and then they stopped it with Abby. Fatal mistake. Because had they chemistry tested Abby, they would have seen this is not the gig for her. It's not that she's not a great person. It's not that she's not nice or kind. It's just this isn't for her. She's not going to shine in this type of of a role. She does better one-on-one with people, okay? So I will tell you, Y'all, they ain't going to do it. Megan has tried this many times before. Uh, Last summer, she was, you know, banging on the door, wanting them to bring on her best friend. You know, everybody's her best friend. Her best friend, Barry Weiss, because Barry had left the New York Times under a cloud of mess and drama. Okay. And guess what? Because they had learned their lesson, they didn't even consider Barry as a permanent co-host. Did she co-host from time to time like she had done before? Yes, but that's as far as it went. And guys, it's the same thing with Essie Cup. And so I just want to share with you guys who always bring up Essie's name that she's just not going to be a permanent co-host on this show. Now let's go to the next portion that I want to share. For those of you who are new 
like I said earlier, you may not know she actually was considered before and she didn't make it. Now, I'm going to be reading something to you and we're going to be on this for a little bit here. In Ramin Satuta's book, Ladies Who Punch, The Explosive Insight Story of the View, the very first version that he published uh, was a hardback version. That's the version we all read here. We did a review of the book. Shout out to Ramin. Excellent book. Very first person to ever author a book about the show. Last year, his publishing company published an updated version, which was in paperback. And I talked to you guys about some of the revelations, the juiciness of that new uh, updated version. You know, we learned that Sunny had accused ABC of sneaking uh, and reading her emails, right? We talked about that. If you missed it, it's here on the channel. Just scroll, scroll, scroll. You'll see it. We also talked about the fight we never heard about when Sunny uh, and Brian Teta got into a big, you know, blowout. We talked about all of that, okay? So I want to read to you in the original book, the time SC tried out, because I want you to understand that this is just not going to be for her. It's not for her. Um, So let's just go there. So I'm starting, uh, it's in the chapter called She's Back. And this chapter is all about when Rosie O'Donnell came back the second time. Okay. And at this point, the show had gone down in the ratings. It was almost on its last leg and they were trying to come up with some table formula that would work. Okay. Not just for us as viewers, but for the women. So I'm starting on page 254. Everyone agreed on one thing. The view needed to be political again in the lead up to the 2016 presidential election. After firing nearly all of the co-hosts, ABC had the summer to hire two more replacements to fill in the table. Rosie and Whoopi both strongly advocated for Megan McCain, the millennial daughter of Arizona Senator John McCain, as the show's next Republican. She'd been a regular guest, and they thought she was more grounded than Elizabeth Hasselbeck. However, someone said that McCain wasn't good TV. It's fine, Megan remembered thinking. I'm going to, to move on with my life. So in August, with no clear answers about who they were going to hire, ABC decided to hold an audition for the remaining chairs. The network invited Republicans Essie Cup, Anna Navarro, and Nicole Wallace to a studio to practice with Whoopi and Rosie in front of a studio audience. Sonny Hostin, a legal pundit on CNN who had frequently filled in on The View, was another contender. Rosie had already told everyone that Sonny was going to be hired. The network also threw in two ESPN personalities, Jamel Hill. Shout out to Jamel Hill. She's one of my favorite people, by the way. This is me saying, not not Ramin. So let's get back to that. So they brought on Jamel Hill and Sage Steele. Stephanie Rule from Bloomberg TV made the cut. So did Lauren Sanchez, the former extra host, whose last application for The View had been sabotaged by Star Jones. It was like the Hunger Games, Rosie told me a few days later. I I think Whoopi and I were a little bit shocked at having to do a chemistry test. I mean, we were like, those things really don't work. I felt it was negative and competitive. I think maybe they should have taken us all out to dinner with the top candidates to see how we got along. The auditioning women entered the studio in pairs after they had gone through a packet of sample hot topics, choosing the ones they wanted to discuss. Essie Cup was teamed with Sonny Hostin, and they picked a story with an abortion angle. I thought, great, Essie told me, Ramin says. She was pregnant at that time and hosting a revamped crossfire for CNN. I'm really passionate about that. As soon as Cup tried to offer her anti-abortion beliefs, quote, Rosie goes ballistic, she told me. Have you ever had an abortion? Rosie asked Cup. I don't know why that's relevant. That's lazy, Rosie shouted. If you want to do this show, you have to be able to tell your stories. I can't have another Elizabeth on this show. It got so personal, as he told me. It went from zero to 100 in two seconds. It's just not my style to run into a crazy argument. I mean, she was simultaneously having a debate with me, which was live to tape, by the way. But she was talking to producers who weren't even there. I'm like, is this part of the debate? Should I start debating whether you should have another Elizabeth? Cup was not prepared for Rosie's hostility. I remember selective things. I just remember a woman in the audience yelled, Essie is right. 
I blacked out Ramin after that. There's no recovering. I mean, Rosie was on a crusade against people like me. She didn't know who I was, but she knew she didn't like me. Essie says she lost track of how long she actually sat there. That's like asking how long was the car crash. All she saw was a cartoon conservative in me. Essie, who isn't religious and supports LGBTQ plus rights, states, whatever conception she had about Elizabeth, she projected that onto me. After she left the stage, Essie says she was so confused that she had no idea if she had succeeded or failed. Was that good or bad? She thought to herself. Do they want this kind of craziness or not? Because if not, she's the problem, not me. One of the staff members apologized to cut backstage, which she took as his way of telling her she was out of the running. Cup went to collect her stuff in another area of the building, not realizing she was being followed. So I'm picking up my things and all of a sudden there's this woman right next to me. It's Rosie. And she's like, look, I'm going to be brutally honest. If you want to do this job, you're going to have to tell your secrets. After chewing Essie Cup out, Rosie was now trying to be her career coach. What do you do for a living, for example? I talk about politics on CNN. Oh, really? So you don't need this? Uh, No, I don't. With that, Essie says Rosie walked away to turn her attention on the other women. It was fucking crazy, she told me. It was bananas. She's not a stable person. Now, that's all I'll read to you from that. But I, I share that with you guys to just say that, you know, it's not like Essie didn't know what she was coming into during that audition. Because one of the main things here is you have to be prepared. Okay, you have to be prepared for the chemistry test. I mean, she had seen Rosie stint the first time. She saw how Rosie and Whoopi battled it out. She saw how Rosie even went against the matriarch of the show. And yet Rosie never was fired. So she came to that audition and maybe it was her hormones because she was pregnant at the time. Maybe she would do it differently if she had an, another option you know, opportunity, which she will never have in my view on the view. But I really feel like that she showed them that she really couldn't handle not just the pressure of talking about a topic, but the pressure that comes when someone or several someones at the table strongly disagree with your position. Megan can't handle it either. That's why she unravels, in, excuse me, unravels in a mess of emotion and blaming and victimhood. Um, so guys, listen, Essie is off the table, in my opinion. Now, I don't run the show, so I could be wrong. Now, as we uh, leave together, I want to play this last clip. This is a time on the show when the women were actually discussing in hot topics something that Essie Cup said. So take a listen, and I'll talk to you on the next podcast. Back. First Lady Melania Trump apparently should dump her husband over the humiliation she's been put through, according to... Oh, they agree. According to HLN host Essie Cup, now she says Melania needs to set a good example for the next generation of women. Would you tell Melania to get no, out? No, I think it's really rich for a conservative pundit to talk about, uh, you know, divorce Are and you to surprised encourage. Essie I'm Cup surprised. Essie. I'm surprised oh. that Essie, as a conservative uh, Republican pundit, is is. Uh, you know, putting this on Melania. Melania is the one that should deal with it. Melania should break up her family. They did this to Hillary as well. The bottom line is this is about Trump's speech. Right. Can I point something out? <laughs> this is nothing like it was with Hillary because Hillary was the wife from Giddy Up number one. Yeah. Melania. Numero tres. Is number three. And she came in. I mean, Under I'm sorry. Up. So, you know, S.E., I don't know what you know about their relationship. I don't know Jack, but I don't know enough to tell her to leave somebody if she's perfectly comfortable. You know, you don't know if she's upset. She might just be like, I'm fine, leave me alone. Here we go, here we go again. Trying hard, but you want to be my friend. In a place to